Christianity is like a suit of clothes that's too big for us. So when you become a Christian, you get a suit of clothes, which are your beliefs, your beliefs, of, and it's, they're too big for you. You, you know, we, we have to grow into them. And many of us, even after many, many years of being a Christian, it, we still haven't grown into them, okay? So you might call it Christian beliefs are like a, 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 a suit that's too big for you. But all non-Christian beliefs, all non-Christian beliefs are like a suit way too small for you, which means it pinches all the time. It doesn't really fit your nature. It doesn't really fit your human nature at all. And sometimes if you move suddenly, it rips, okay? Which is a horrible feeling. What was that? Where is it? <laughs> it's not what, where, it's where is that? Where did that happen? And what that means is, all people who are not Christians have adopted beliefs that don't fit with reality, the reality of who they were built to be. Uh, if you, uh, we were built to know and love God and worship him and serve him. So if you worship and love anything else besides God, it's gonna pinch in a bad way and sometimes it's gonna rip. The early Christians, the way they did it, of course, was uh, the early Christian approach, pardon me, the pagan approach to suffering did not work for them. They were Stoics, of course. And at the same time, when, when, when the pagans saw the way Christians suffered, not just the way they were persecuted, you know, in the arena and, and they watched them when the lions came to get them, but even how they dealt with the plagues. When the plagues came, you know, when everybody got sick in the cities and all the pagans ran for the hills, the Christians were able to stay there and take care of the sick and even die in taking care of the sick. And the pagans looked at that because they realized, wait a minute, wait a minute, how do you do that? How can, you, how can you face suffering like that? How can you face death like that? There are all sorts of ways in which the early Christians showed the pagans that their beliefs were like a suit that didn't fit. How do we do it now? What do I mean by a Christian high theory and apologetic? Well, by the way, I'm a little indebted to uh, Leslie Newbigin on this, but let me, let me talk to you about this. When you and I think of apologetics, we tend to think of uh, evidence for the resurrection or reasons to trust the Bible. And that's right. But if you go to the early Christian apologists, and by that I mean people like Tertullian and Justin Martyr and Irenaeus and Clement of Alexandria and, and, and Augustine himself and Origen, if you read their apologetics, they did definitely do some evidence. They certainly talked about the resurrection as an as a evidence for the truth of Christianity, absolutely. But what they did was they critiqued their culture See, I'm afraid a lot of our apologetics, in some ways, are granting too much to our culture. Because our culture says, look, we are objective and rational. And if you Christians will come up to our high standards of objective rationality, we would be happy to give you a hearing. So we have the standards, and if you will come up to our standards, we would be happy to give you a hearing. That's not what the early Christians did. They critiqued the standards. They didn't come up to the standards of the pagan uh, culture. They critiqued the very standards of the pagan culture. Or the way Leslie Newbigin says, before you explain the gospels of the culture, you need to explain and critique the culture with the gospel. You need to, go, you need to say to the culture, your standards don't work. You're not objective, you say you're objective. You're not rational, you say you're rational.